Alrighty, today we're going to do the rear brakes on a Dodge Ram 3500 Dually. You're going to need a hammer, you're going to need the pads and the installation clips, some blue Loctite, a clamp, grease of some sort either in a gun or in a tube, seal for the axle, pry bar, half inch breaker bar, 21 millimeter socket, 7 8 socket, 3 8 drive ratchet with a 19, 9 16 or a 14 millimeter, maybe a 13, a pick, a screwdriver, some extensions, 14 millimeter for the impact. If you don't have an impact, that's fine. And a drain pan, because we're going to be breaking the axle out. Some brake clean, razor blade for the seal. A jack suitable to hold the truck. A jack suitable to lift the truck. And plenty of wind, as you can probably hear. Since this truck has a dually, the lug nuts are further back than on the front wheels. We're gonna need an extension to get the bolts off, nuts off. You're gonna wanna at least break them loose before you get the tires off the ground. You're gonna wanna put your bottle jack underneath the shock mount. The shock mount is directly connected to the axle. should never trust the hydraulics by themselves. So having a jack stand will make sure, in case the bottle jack fails, it doesn't fall on you. Now that the wheels are off the ground, you still need to make sure that it's going to be supported by the jack. When all the weights off. jack underneath the axle it'll support it it's what its job is lower your jack hydraulic jack down nice and easy Get plenty of weight on it I always keep the jack there just in case this isn't gonna break but you never know all right since I loosen up the lug nuts be able to take them off now. Get them all off and always always make sure that you just throw these so you can't find them later. Now you can take the tires off. try not to lose the tires you can get away with some bolts missing but tires you gotta have them so I had to look at these brakes before I took the wheels off and they're actually not too bad um, a little bit of glazing so this will be a little squeaky uh, pad life is okay but trucks got a hundred thousand miles so I'm gonna change out the disc as well as the brake pads First thing you're going to want to do is you want to take off the caliper. And to do that, we're going to take off this bolt. And there's another small one right here. Oh, super squeaky. So now what you're going to do, once you get the bolts taken off and you've thrown them in the garbage, you're going to pry the caliper away, just so that you can get it up and off. 
nice and free. So go ahead and get your bungee cord. I'm going to go ahead and loop that through uh, somewhere. I don't know. We'll do... We'll do right here, I guess. I usually just make a loop. Hang it around the leaf spring right here. So the caliper's a little tight. There we go. Put that back on. Maybe. Possibly. Fingers can work today. Fingers are not going to work today. So we're going to use this outside one. Can't see what I'm doing, so it's fine. Hook those together. Put that around there. That'll support the weight. You don't want all of it hanging from there. It moves easy, so nothing's nothing's too tight. So next we're gonna take the pads off. And these little clips. These will be replaced. Make sure you keep all these things. Put them on your fridge. Christmas, come around. Free gifts. I mean, Dodge gave them to you. Might as well use them, right? And then we're going to take off the bolts that hold this piece on. This is a 21 millimeter. So, it's two bolts, there's one here, there's one back there. This is where using a breaker bar will come in really handy. You need the extra length for extra leverage. Don't be afraid to hit yourself in the face with this. It'll only hurt for a little while. Bottom one is good. Get that in the hand. Do the top one with an extension. Whatever I, wherever that is. Did you see where I put it? Hey, I found the extension. You'll never guess where it was. It's in the last place I left it. So that'll let you clear the leaf spring. Now you could do this with an impact, but I'm just showing you that you can do it with regular hand tools. Oh, did that scare you? Kind of scared me. I thought I was going to hit the camera. The reason why we're taking this out is because the next few steps are going to be rather rapid. And it's got to be done anyway. Throw away one of those bolts. The other one's just for alignment. Now we're going to be ready to take off this cover here. This cover is the axle. So this is going to go all the way to the center differential. So when you break all of these bolts loose, yeah, you can lose two of them. It's fine. Just, just adjust your bolt pattern and I mean, you only need four, you know, because five is it's kind of uneven, and well, six, one, two, three, one, yeah, you could grab six. I mean, you could save, you, you could you could use four. We're just going to use four. Get your drain pan. You're going to, you're going to get some oil that's going to be leaking out. You don't need to take these off with an impact. Usually these have got Loctite on them. Loctite, what it does is when you put it on there, it goes on as a liquid and it dries as a very semi-hard kind of kind of paste. And uh, because it dries and it expands due to vibration and everything, it'll keep these bolts from 
backing out on themselves. Now, I like to break these loose with, uh, with a breaker bar to begin with. Because if you hit them with the impact and they do happen to be in there a little bit weird, you can strip out the bolts. So, I've taken out all the other bolts. And you can see that these... Maybe? These have got this uh, that's sealing on it. So, this is Loctite. Does good. It keeps the bolts from backing out on their own. This takes a little bit of a little bit of leverage. And once you break this free, the seal from right here is going to start leaking out from the bottom. This bolt's probably going to have oil on it because it's going to get saturated. Tells me that that thing's gonna come out of there nice and easy. So there is Loctite, but there's now oil on it because the oil's coming out. It's coming out right here if you can see it. Take a little hammer, a little tappy tap. Free it up, and here comes the oil. See that stuff? I gotta get rid of most of that. Anyway, the wind it was it's still blowing. So I'm gonna have to hold this container right here. Pull out the axle a little bit. It's gonna fall out of its uh, its home in the differential. Right there. Make a mess, spilling oil, winds taking it. Um, get rags before you do this, I forgot. Might be able to reach one. Okay. So, what I like to do, this will drain out. It'll just keep leaking for a long, long, long time. So, What I like to do is take the dirtiest rag you've got, jam it down here so you can control the oil flow a little better. A screwdriver or a pick, kind of shove her in there. So the, the rag will be like a dam so you can get the axle out so it's not in your face. Now, make sure when you get your rags, make sure you ask them to put as much metal in here as possible so that you can cut yourself open and stop working early for the day. Look at that. All right, you're gonna take your rag you're going to hold it underneath it because that, that entire axle is going to have oil on it. As it's coming out, just give it a good wipe off. Now you can you can work with one axle, but it does actually work better with two, so don't lose this one. So now you're gonna take your rag out, 
it'll it'll start leaking again, so don't worry about it as long as the wind isn't blowing. There's a ring that's right here. You're gonna want to take that off. You could lose that. It's whatever. It's no biggie. And then there's a keyway right here. I would say probably that's important, but the other stuff, whatever. So, and you'll see that this this jam nut's not tight. The only reason you need to tighten this is to preload the bearing. We'll do that later, but we'll go ahead and unscrew that. And we'll clean everything up when we're putting it back together. It's going to be a lot easier because it's about to get really messy. Okay, so we're going to unscrew this. You could take it all the way off, leave it on there a couple of times. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this entire assembly toward you. This will keep the bearing that's inside there from falling out into the ground or in your bucket that you've got. So give it a nice little hold here. And now it's up against it. So the entire assembly is free. There's a seal on the back. You can get that the rest of the way off. I mean, this, this and the keyway, you maybe want to keep. Those are kind of important. You can get this bearing. Now, you see that this bearing's got oil in it. We're going to put grease in it when we put it back together. I'll explain that later. Take this whole thing off. You're going to want to grab the entire thing as a whole, slide it out. Stand it up on this end right here. caught up on the seal in the back and I'll show you what happens with that okay Put a rag underneath there don't make that big of a mess Okay, so that shaft looks pretty decent, it's a little dusty, but we'll clean it off. The reason why it was so hard to come out is because when you pull this assembly out, this seal destroys itself. There's no way to get around it, it it's going to fall apart. So we're going to get that out in a minute. We're going to take out this ring, and then we're going to take out the bolts that hold the disc to the mount down there. Housekeeping is a lot easier if you just clean up as you're working. Alright, it's going to be a little bit harder to do. I can't find my actual tripod. I just got you guys on a small little one. This ring right here is the pickup sensor for your ABS. So this will tell the, this will tell the ABS computer to either lock or unlock the wheel if, you're, if you lock all, your, uh, all of them up while breaking. So... What you're going to do is you're going to take out these four bolts that hold just this plate in. Small little ones on the side. Somebody just crashed into a parked car with a bicycle. Sweet. That's a 13. I'm just going to break these loose without you guys watching because I can't show you anyway. So, if you drop these in there, don't worry. 
this whole thing's coming out of there, you're going to have tons of room. So when this little metal ring comes up, it's going to probably have this seal that I was talking to you about. Nope, it's staying. Okay, so there's one bolt. That's the only one we need. Four is overkill, I think. Okay. So this little ring here, what this does is this uh, this always spins. And if the, if the computer sees that the wheel has stopped, it'll release the brake pressure so that this will keep rolling. Okay. So here's that seal I was talking to you about. This thing always falls apart when you take that off of the off the hub. It just you can't do anything about it. It will you need to have these. Depending on your your axle, I think you get a different uh, seal anyway. So make sure you get the right one. I'm gonna take the bearing out. We're gonna clean it up, put some grease in it anyway, and then we get to take out these bolts. These bolts are what they call an E, as an echo. Got a mosquito, so that's good. That one won't be biting me. Uh, these are these are E star bolts. You probably don't have that tool in your toolbox, but no worries, because you can make a six point socket fit on there. I'll prove it to you. Six point socket. It'll fit perfectly right there. So you don't have to go out and buy a whole set of just these. If you have metric or standard six points, you can probably get away with finding exactly which one you need on any any type of these. So once you find a socket that's gonna fit on there, if you don't have an impact and you don't have a vise, you're gonna to have to use a pry bar. You're gonna take the pry bar Put it up against where the the wheels mount. You're going to put it against your leg, and then use that as a torsion to break these bolts loose. So I've got my leg, my foot, right up against this one. Since we need to turn it this way, the leg has to be in front. It's easier to pull than it is to push when loosening stuff. broke free. Now just do it 15 more times. Whoever put these in decided to use red Loctite. Now I don't know if you can see that my autofocus isn't working today. So red Loctite you normally have to heat these up to get them to break free because red Loctite is pretty much permanent. Now that thing will never have come apart just because of how the rest of it's assembled. I don't know why they would have done that. I doubt the factory did it. And my opinion on Loctite is put it on bolts that had Loctite on them when you took it apart. Some of these didn't have Loctite. I'm not going to Loctite them. I'll just tighten them, torque them, all that good stuff. But you don't have to put Loctite on every single bolt. It's just one of those things that's it's, it's a waste of resources, supplies, and time. And then if you have to take it back apart, you have to deal with it. So. Use Loctite where they've used it before. But all the bolts are out, so... You can separate that. So, this is the actual disc. So, we're gonna, we're gonna replace this. We're gonna clean all this up, all this nasty stuff. Clean all this up. Flip this over. Clean the face up where the seal goes, clean this race, and then we'll we'll reinstall everything.
Now this cavity is normally filled with differential oil, but we're going to grease up the bearings for the break-in period. Because what happens is the truck moving down the highway doesn't necessarily have oil that comes down here. So you don't fill up the level so like it's halfway. That's way too much oil. So we're going to put grease in in the bearings. So when they go in, before you start turning left and right, making sure that uh, you get oil normally that'll, that'll flow to one side or the other, the grease will keep it here so you don't burn up these races. Now when you look at the races, just gotta make sure there's no blue spots. Doesn't look like there's anything that's been stationary. This is probably easier to see. But the race itself, nice and new. Looks like it did when it left the when it left the assembly line, so don't have to replace that race. If you do have to replace the race, you have to come in from the other side and drive it out uh, this way. So if you need to do this one, you got to come in from this way to get this to come out that way. Because the bearing is going to fit in there like that. And then normally when it's just squished together, that's what holds everything in place and you don't get any uh, slack or anything. So we're going to hit these with brake clean also, just make sure that they're nice and nice and clean. You can take a look at them also, make sure there's no scarring, no bluing where uh, any of the bearings were stationary and just grinding away. Um, so the inside one's much bigger than the outside one. You can't, you can't put them in wrong, they just don't, they won't fit. You can put them in wrong, but you won't, you won't have anything to do with the other one. We'll clean up the uh, lock ring, the wedge, and also the, the retaining ring for the wedge. A little bit of brake clean. You don't have to go crazy. It's pretty much clean, cleanish oil on it so give everything a nice wipe there you go shiny and this ring all this does is hold the wedge in place so doesn't really matter if you clean it but got it apart may as well make sure it goes back together nice and neat little wedge this holds the lock in place not the special and the bearings themselves you can be a little more diligent with cleaning but once you spray them Give them a little, give them a little spin. Spray them for both sides. Make it nice and clean. So anything that's left over in there should get pushed out when we put grease in it. Looking for damages. Thing moves nice and smooth. Looks good. And since I have it here, I'll go ahead and hit this exciter ring just to get the res oil residue off of it. And I'll show you on the brake, 
the internal parking brake. It's also a good thing, it's also a good plan to go ahead and hit the ABS sensor. It's a little magnet, so any dust or anything or metal that gets flying around in there, it'll stick to it. Then you'll get false readings and your ABS light will come on and then you'll have to do all this again. So, you've got to depart, may as well do it. Nice and clean. You don't have to go crazy. This is exposed to the air. So, nothing crazy. So, the ABS pickup sensor is right here. There's a lot of dust on it. A little squirt. Use a rag. Clean it off. It's got a lot of metal on it. So, that may give you a false sense of reading. Make sure it's nice and clean. And to show you how the ring works, this thing is going to be way in here. And every time, every time it goes space stuff. It should always see the spaces. If it ever sees that it stopped moving, but the speedometer's still working, the vehicle knows that this wheel is stopped moving. So it'll unleash the brake automatically so you don't go out of control. All right, so you don't need a grease gun to grease the bearings, but I don't have a tube that's just open or almost empty. So I've got the grease gun itself. I've got some nitrile gloves on. I'm just going to fill my hand up with some grease. I'm going to do both bearings at the same time. Make sure you put the other one somewhere else. What you're going to do is you're going to hold this in your hand like that. And you're actually going to kind of cut a little piece. You're going to go around around the bearing in a circle. Now they sell kits that you just put the bearing in and you pump it up and it does just, just whatever. You don't need to waste money on that. You've got a you've got a bearing packer right here attached to your body. Now this isn't a normal bearing where it's never going to see oil. So I'm going to put a little bit on that side, come back to this side, put a little bit. Because eventually oil will get to this. And then the grease will just be pushed away and then the oil will penetrate the grease and everything and everybody will be happy. So, don't need to go crazy just for the break-in period until you can drive it enough to get oil. Oil into the uh, into the cavity right here. So, I'm gonna take this and put it inside its home. Just like that. I've got my other bearing here. I'm gonna do the same thing. This one's going to get the oil first. So we'll put a little bit, a little bit into here and there. You ain't got to go crazy. And I just realized you can't see it because the camera's moving. Crap. All right, well, <laughs> sorry. Scrape all the stuff off. I'm an amateur. Put a little bit in there. You ain't got to go crazy. Like I said, these these are going to see oil. It's not like your normal wheel hub, like on the front axles. If you have to rebuild those, um, because they'll never they don't get oil. So just roll it around. Make sure it's good. You'll feel the difference when it's godly. Okay, the camera's it's about to fall. Uh. Okay. 
Okay, well, I got both of them. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm going to take this one and set it aside because we're not going to need this until we're almost finished. camera stand holy moly the entire thing just collapsed all right Joby has a weight limit don't put a cannon with a microphone on it apparently all right so next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the seal now we've got a brand new seal here compare this to the old one so it, it fell apart now, they sell a tool that you can use to install this, but you don't need one. Make sure it lines up. Kind of get it started on one side. Start it on the other. Nice, solid pressure. And it'll go in. Good. I just saved you like a hundred and some odd dollars. Um, so this is this seal's got two two seals in it. So the inside one will spin, but the outside one doesn't. So now you've got your bearing reinstalled, your new seal installed. It's time to put the new disc onto the hub. Don't worry about cleaning any of the the material of this up yet. You're going to be uh, handling it, so you're going to get oil in it again. Once we're going to install it, we'll, we'll spray it with some brake clean. That's as simple as lining up the bolt holes. And putting those, putting these bolts back in it. So, if yours is the same as mine, you'll know what torque spec I'm using. If yours has hex head bolts, make sure you refer to the service manual and you can get the torque specs from there. I will be putting Loctite on these. So I like blue Loctite because it, it does its job, but it also comes off easy. You don't need a lot. A little bit'll a little bit'll go a long way. So do it to all the bolts and then tighten them. You can buy the Loctite and this liquid. Or they have a little glue stick looking thing. Um, or they have Extra have little little buckets that you can just dip dip the bolt in. I mean, if you're just using it one time, not going to use it much. Just get a little tube. You can do the whole. You can do all four brakes with this. As long as you don't Loctite everything, just Loctite the stuff that had Loctite on it when you took it apart. So we've got all the bolts on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this ring back in. I can't, I can't actually see it, so I don't even know if I'm over a hole. So it just goes in there, put the four, four bolts back in it, tighten it down, and we're ready to install it. Oh, it was lined up. <laughs> So all the bolts are in, let's throw it on. All right, so now we're ready to install the hub 
and the disc back onto the to the spindle here. We're gonna hit this with a little bit of brake clean. Give it a good wipe. We're gonna pick up this entire assembly and slide it all the way on. Now when that seal gets to this lip, you gotta make sure it's straight so that it goes back far enough. It just have a nice handle, it's kinda heavy. Okay. That seal's gotta go just a little further. There we go. With that all the way on, you're ready to put this bearing in. Put it on put it on the sleeve. You can rock. Rock the disc back and forth a little bit. It'll get you in there all the way. We're gonna take our ring. Now, there's also another crazy special tool that helps you set the preload on this. It's got like six little nubs and you, you put it on a wrench and you put it on a torque wrench and and it just kind of, you know, it, 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 you, you, you set it and you forget it. Because um, what you're going to do is you need to, you need to preload this. Now, the weird thing about preloading is you preload it to the torque spec and then you back it off so that this, these squares will then line up with this one. I don't even know if you can see that or not, I hope. Well, I'll show you when we get there, but, um, so the torque spec is kind of important, but not really, if that makes sense. So what I like to do, make sure it's on there all the way. Should be able to screw this thing in all the way, get the bearing. Once it starts getting tight, just give it a little, give it a little turn while you're going. That'll make the bearing sit inside the race. Now you're at a point where you really would need that tool, but if you get a pick, you pull down on it, rotate, the bearing will keep freeing itself up. And eventually with this, you're not going to be able to tighten this anymore. So you know if you... If you had that tool, and I can't put like however many foot pounds it is, 20 something or whatever. I know if I still had that socket on here and I can move it with this, it's not tight enough. So we're just gonna keep moving it. Oh, okay, so right there. I probably cannot tighten that anymore. So, you get a little screwdriver or a punch. little bit of a little bit of tap and right now it's not moving so as long as you can turn this give a little bit of tap again solid as a rock so I need to move you guys No takes on this one. One take. Okay, so. You'll see that the square little hole needs to line up with this one. So I've, I've tightened this. Everything's still spinning, but I physically can't just move this anymore. So now we're ready to line it up. Take a screwdriver or whatever. So we quote unquote set the preload. Once that's lined up, you take your little take your little square thing. 
You're going to put it right in there. You're going to take this, and then one, one side of this has got a little hook on it. Right there. So, the little hook right here. You're going to put it in the threads around it as close as you can get. Use your screwdriver. And put it as close as it'll go. Nope, we want that one to be... Nope, we want that one to be against it. Alright. It's not working out for us. So... So, nothing special about that. All that does is clip into the threads so that this nut can't back out any further than we've already backed it out. So, you don't need a crazy special tool for that. Now, I know someone in the comments is going to be like, you got to have that tool because of the blah, 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 blah. No. No, you don't. So, it's in the threads all the way around. You're good to go. So, as far as the next step, we can put the axle in, but once you bolt it down and you lock it in place, you can't turn this anymore. So I like to put the brake caliper back on. Make sure everything's nice and free. Um, doesn't bind up before you put the axle back in, because as soon as you put the axle in, you cannot turn this. You'll get like that much slack, slap in it. So uh, let's put that on. So. To mount the caliper, we're going to have to bolt this back on. But first, we need to take these slides out and grease them. Simply pull, and that'll come off just like that. That's nasty. You want to clean it up. Hit it with some brake clean, and we'll show you, I'll show you putting the grease on it. You also want to make sure that you spray the inside of these holes, and then shove this back in. Actually, here, I'll do it. No, no takes again. Pull that one all the way off so you can get most of the... Most of the way down the shaft. Make a mess. So that's about a halfway full of, full of brake cleaner. You're going to put this in there. Just give it a little spin. As you push the tube in there, the brake cleaner is going to come out. I'll show you. See how it's coming out? So, put that in there, give it a little twirl, move her in and out. Should be nice and dirty. Take your rag. There she go. Ready for grease. The same thing on the back one. Really hard to judge how much how much you squeeze the the nozzle on the brake cleaner. We're gonna reuse those little boots. So as you push this in, the brake cleaner is gonna come out of it. Don't go too crazy because then you'll get it all over you and all the good stuff. So so that should be pretty much cleaned out. Clean it off, ready for grease. I'm gonna take this, both of these. Since you put the rod in there, it's not gonna be much fluid left over. Wipe everything down, and we're ready for grease. So the packet comes with some high temp, uh, high temp grease. The reason why you want to put it on these, on these. I forgot to put the boot on. That's gonna make a mess. The mosquitoes are out, so I gotta finish quick. But don't rush. So, put a little bit on there. Give it a little, give it a little schmoo. So then this, same thing. Put 
thing again. You'll push down. And that should that should hold its place. So if you can move it in and out without any problems, the caliper can slide on it without any issues too. You don't need a lot. I forgot the boot again. in there. Make sure it doesn't bind up. Push it all the way down. Good to go. So now the thing's gonna wanna gonna wanna slide without any problems on there. Let's take this and mount it back on the truck. Alrighty. So once you've got the bolt that you found because you kicked it you know to oblivion earlier I'm not going to describe how this goes on because you can only get it to go on one way because nothing else will mount. So once you get that lined up nice and easy, you're going to take your bolt from the back. Once you get the hole, go ahead and get her started. Neighbors across the street are yelling at each other. It's good. I don't have to look anymore, but you'll have to. Tighten those down. Remember I said don't don't put the axles in. Every time you get something secure so it doesn't move, make sure it turns. I'm just showing you how these go. How these mount, you're gonna have to find out what the torque specs are for your vehicle or your current configuration. Because if I tell you something, you break a bolt. That's my problem. Not enough problems as it is. Now we need to make sure that this we're gonna we're gonna take the calipers and we're gonna we're gonna make those compress. So in order to make those compress, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an old brake pad, we're gonna put it in there, we're gonna take that C clamp, and we're gonna push on the we're gonna push on the brake pad to compress the pistons. Now if you take yours apart and these are broken, leaking, you need to either rebuild them or get a new caliper. No way around it. It's a little awkward trying to do it on camera, but I will try my darndest. Use a you want to use an old one, but you don't want to possibly damage a new one. So, once you get the clamp around it and almost drop it on your face, this is actually very difficult to try to do around the camera.
once you've got your clamp in place, on top of the brake pad, just going to slowly tighten this. And what's going to happen is the fluid that's in these pistons are going to fall back through the brake line, fill up the master cylinder just a little bit, but it's going to give you enough room to put your brand new brake pads. Might fall off the back there, hope I don't. It's going to give you enough room to put your brake pads on your new brake rotor. Jesus. It really isn't working without trying to make this work for the camera. So you don't want to force it because the fluid's got to have time to go back through the lines and through the master cylinder, but just want to keep, keep applying pressure and eventually these will be fully collapsed. Slow, consistent pressure. So your clamp falls off the caliper because it's rounded. So now you'll see that the caliper pistons have been pushed back in. Now you can keep going all the way until you get this thing to bottom out. Not really a need. Once you get that pretty well collapsed, you should be good. So now these pistons aren't sticking up anymore. So now I can have room for the new brake disc and then the pads on each side. Let's install the pads and then throw this on. To install the pads, it's actually pretty simple. They're only going to go on one way. So, obviously they're not going to fit that way. They're going to fit like that. Before you do this, you need to put the retainers in. Your brakes should come with a little hardware kit. With a bunch of these little little springs. Um, these only go on one way as well. One side's got a big loop on it and one side's got a little bitty clip. The clip goes toward the brake. Put the clip in first. It'll lock in place. A very satisfying snap when you know it's all the way in. Don't get your glove caught. Ow. That was a part of my finger. Snap, snap. Do the same on the back. You're gonna have to look at it. I don't have to, I, can, I know where it is. I say that and I get it all crooked. My glove caught in it again. Snap. Back first. Oh, that wasn't a snap, that was a bend. Uh, snap! So the brake pads, they've got this... They've got this little metal thing. 
what this does is whenever the pad gets down that far, this little metal is actually going to grind against the disc. That gives you your loud screeching noise. That means you should probably change it. So you're going to put the bottom in first, like at least I do. Work it around. Line the top up. You can put grease on these, but the grease is going to get pretty nasty pretty quick. So that one's in. Back one is pretty much identical. Put it in the slot at the bottom. Line it up in the top, and you're good. So since you guys are already there, we're going to put the caliper on. Support the weight. Take the bungee. Don't let it stick you in the hand, ow, like I just did. Now this is going to go on without any problem because we just collapsed. The, uh, the pistons. So these things can actually move. I can't see it. These things can actually move. So if you're trying to put this down, it's not going to work. So pull it in a little bit, put her down. Same thing on the top. Get the small bolt, at least one of them, unless you threw both of them away, which I'm going to go get those now. Get one started, kind of bottom it out. Now these do have a little section, it's got a flat side on it. You could put a back, a wrench on the back of it so you can hold it, so you can torque it. These are very small bolts, they don't need to be torqued that much. Started. Am I going the right way? Okay. I'll come back in and I'll hit these with the torque wrench. Remember how I said you need to leave the axle out? Now that you've got everything installed. And pretty much tight. See if it turns. The grinding you're hearing back there, a little bit of these pads, a little bit of the parking brake that's inside the drum, and then also take this, see if you can move it. So, everything's good. Let's install the axle. Now, the axle has a seal. That should be replaced. So you're gonna take this one off, even if it comes off in pieces. You're gonna use that razor blade that you got. take the razor blade scrape off any material make it nice and clean because if this leaks oil it's gonna make a mess So there was Loctite on these bolts, so we'll put Loctite on them when we go to install it.
And the reason I'm doing this on the ground, making it hard for myself, is to show you how to break something. And you don't need a lift to work on your truck. Does it help? Oh yeah. Does an impact help? Oh yeah. But, it's more than possible. More than possible to do in your own driveway without spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on specialty equipment. So, that's clean. Put your new Make sure you do this before you put it inside the, the axle housing because you ain't gonna get that on. Now, when you install the axle you just need to make sure it goes in nice and smooth. It's got to go through a few bearings. It's going to come to a point where it's going to stop. Now you need to push down on it while pushing in. Don't pinch your fingers. Give it a little twist. So now it's lined up with the, the differential. Move it in a little bit more. All right. She's, she's ready to go in. This, uh, this gasket's got a little holder on it, so you can kind of do your own thing, this little tab. You can cut it off when you're done, doesn't matter. So now that the axle's in, as soon as we get it in a little more, should be able to keep moving this to line up your bolt holes. Well, my battery died. So put all the bolts in, put Loctite on them, and we'll tighten it down. All right, well, I found the other bolts, so whatever, I'll put them in. Now what you're gonna wanna do, all that's assembled, everything's torqued down. You're gonna wanna depress the brake pedal a few times to extend the pistons and the calipers. Make sure you do this before you take it off the jacks, put the wheels on it, and then take off going down the highway. Uh, you won't have brakes until you pump them a few times. I'll show you what happens when you do pump them. It's getting a little dark, so I'll turn the light on. Probably should have done that before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the vehicle off the jack stand. can lower down on the bottle jack. I like bottle jacks because they're very easy to control the speed. Go down as fast or slow as you want. Once all the pressure's off of it, you should be able to pull it out. Now as far as as far as uh, bedding the brakes in, it varies depending on the brake manufacturer. So whatever your brake manufacturer box and or instruction manual that came with it says, make sure you follow that. One manufacturer is not going to be the same as the next, so just follow their instructions because they know better than we do. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll answer them. I believe everything was pretty straightforward. Uh, th th thanks for watching.
obviously make sure that you use the right torque specs for everything everything you tighten when it comes to the aluminum wheels make sure you recheck your lug nut torque after about 200 miles or so because aluminum is soft and it can loosen up 